Yeah, the movie show. The Armenian Genocide today with George Kaysen and me. I'm Jay Fidel, and this is a, a movie that is about a real event. And in fact, George's family was involved in the Armenian Genocide in the, what, around the time of World War I. Yep. Uh, so George, um, you know, what about this movie? What did, what did you think of the accuracy of the movie in terms of the genocide? Pretty much accurate. Um, they have, um, they put a love, a, a love story between three people, you know, a, a three people, two men in love with the same woman. And that sort of takes away from the actual historical events, you know, the genocide, but how to make it more interesting. Um, uh, 40 Days of Musadar, you know, Werfel's book, the, the, that was at the end, they showed Musadar. That was pretty much accurate too. And uh, what was happening there, uh, ethnic cleansing, murder, all pretty much accurate from what I have read and from what my uh, grandmother had told me, my parents were just little children if this happened. But luckily they got out, they, they weren't there in their hometown. So they got out, but it's it's a it's a good story. Yeah. Yeah. The filmmaker is Terry George. Yeah. Yeah. It was done in uh, 2016. Mm -hmm. uh, it cost 90 million dollars and it was a bomb at the box office. It earned 10 million or so on 90 million investment. Yes. Um, and, um, you know, what's interesting is that it was uh, the love story was not convincing. The actors were not particularly convincing. The, the um, you know production values are pretty interesting. I mean, good video and sound and all that, uh, and they did capture a number of the important historical events as I could see it uh, in the period. I mean, they did place it in the period. Uh, so you know what you had was um, a love story, as you said, as against a time of genocide. Yeah. Um, I I think he was trying to get our attention about the genocide, and that's why. Mm -hmm. He chose this. Some of his other movies have been docudramas along the same lines. Oh, yeah. um, I, you know, I, I, I wasn't convinced of the, uh, the acting and the romance. I wasn't convinced, um, you know, that this is the way it really would have gone down. Um, mm -hmm. Characters were not all that, you know, well developed, as far as I could see. Um, but on the other hand, it was, uh, it was really uh, shocking to see the genocide unfold in front of you, to see how it connected up with World War I, um, to see the, the, you know, the Turkey, Turkish government go after them that way. So um, without getting too deeply into the story, which, which ends uh, kind of sadly, right? I, I, I don't think they, the two of them survive. Um, let's see, oh yeah, the, the, um, the, the Turkish guy, the, the Armenian, um, he he does he does not survive or he survives. Oh, I don't remember. Michael Bogosian, who was played by Oscar Isaac, he survives. Yeah. He was a, 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 a pharmacist in this small town, and then he went to um, Constantinople. He he married this woman there um, because of the dowry, so he needed the money to go to. And go they to, were showing you, you know, how you go to medical school in yeah. in Turkey. Exactly. Uh, they were showing you about dowries and exactly. you know, arranged marriages, you know, yeah. transactional marriages. Exactly. They were showing you life in the little village as opposed to the big city of exactly. Constantinople back then. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, I mean, it was kind of a, a series of history lessons and all that. So, uh, the, and the two competing fellows, one was this uh, pharmacist, uh, ultimately a medical student running, mm -hmm. you know, joining a medical school on the dowry. Yeah, uh, uh, which was not that much money, actually. Um, I think it was 400, 400 something, yeah. whatever the gold <laughs> coins, 400 yeah. gold coins, gold coins. Thank you. But, uh, yeah. And the other fellow uh, was played by Kristen Bale, who's a very good actor, yeah. um, who was uh, the, 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 uh, the journalist, an American, was, uh, yeah. American journalist based in Paris, who was there and he was mighty upset um, yeah. with the way things were going and how the the Turks were treating people and so forth. Uh, and he's the one who died in the end. It was, it was a, I guess, a poetic he, justice. He, he didn't die. He died in 1938 in another campaign. He lived. It was Anna Kasarian. Oh, was Anna a, died, a, right. She was trying to escape right. to a French uh, ship. 
Exactly. A, a French military Navy ship. That's right. Uh, she's the one who died. And so that frustrated both of her lovers. Um, and they became close because of that. Yeah. And, and, and actually, <clears throat> when you say 1938, and you say that these people lived after, and I remember the postscript in the movie, I mean, they're talking about, are they talking about real characters? Yeah, I mean, this was all based on real characters. Now, the, Christ, the, the Christian Bale um, role was not, that, that was not a real character. It was based on a number of Western journalists who were there, who wrote about this. So Terry George wanted to make this, wanted to have, because he wanted that um, Ambassador Morgenthau, he wanted to get him in there so that he sort of played with it a little bit. He was, he was a high character guy, Morgan. Yeah, 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 exactly. Very. He, he, he told the Turks where to get off. Exactly. When, when, when Talat Pasha said to him, um, you know, um, all these Armenians are dead. New York Life and other insurance companies have uh, have uh, had policies. They have policies. It now belongs. They're all dead. So the, the, the proceeds belong to the state. And um, Morgan said, told him to go fly a kite. Right. But one thing I wanted to just say, because you did mention about the low ratings there without sight unseen. For Rotten Tomatoes and places like that, uh, all these Turkish men got on be, without even seeing the movie and downgraded it. And that's one, one of the reasons other than the, the plot might have been a little fuzzy with the, the romance. That's why it rated so, so low. And then people never did want to go see it. They thought it was a crappy movie. But, you know, it wasn't a bad movie. It maybe might have been the best. But so that, that was one of the things there. But getting back to the, to the whole thing, Charlotte Le Bon played um, Anna Kasarian, who was an Armenian who had been raised in Paris, France. Yeah. Her father was a violinist um, uh, and, and a famous violinist. And he was traveling. So she traveled around the world. She lived in Paris. So she wasn't, she was very assimilated. She, I mean, she wasn't really, you know. Well, she was a, a continental woman. She'd been around yeah. and, and yeah, good looking. But I, I tell you the truth, she wasn't convincing to me. Yeah. I, I, never, I never found real passion with her. Uh, anyway, let me, let me go back to the, yeah. the point that we are making. And, and that exactly. is, I don't understand. You know, so you're saying that when the movie came out in 2016, uh, Turkish people went down uh, they oppose the notion of the genocide. And exactly. the genocide has been at issue. There are people who say, well, we had a genocide. And there are people who say we didn't have a genocide. So it's in, it's in contention. There are deniers out there that denied the genocide took place, which is really sad because you and I know that it did take place. Exactly. Uh, so the, the question, though, is why did the Turks hate them so much? Uh, what was the problem? This is like the um, the Kurds, you know. The Turks also exactly. hate the Kurds in, exactly. in uh, East Eastern Turkey, and we've had plenty of discussion about that. Precisely. So what, what is it with the Turks? The Turks they, they didn't like the Armenians. And what what was it that Americans killed off all the Native Americans? And why is Putin literally killing off Ukrainians right now in these cities? To, to for, what did Hitler? I want. I can only think the word Lebanon's round for Poland. He wanted, he wanted the land. I mean, basically, the Turks knew that the Armenians were indigenous population, right? And at one time, they had their own country, right, before the Turks invaded. And it was like a, a com competition thing. They, they, they didn't want this element in there. Plus, because the Armenians were being treated so poorly, not my great-grandfather, because his cousin was the sultan's uh, finance minister. He was the finance minister. Uh, Hagop, Hagop Kazazian was the finance minister under Abdul Hamid. And he was, his fa he was Abdul Hamid's favorite uh, official because he, he was Did able to- say Kazazian? Yeah, that was our family. That sounds a lot like Hassan. Yeah, well, that's what my father did when he was after, the, he, as he wanted to assimilate. So he changed his religion from Catholic, Eastern Catholic to Methodist, and he went to Americanization classes and he changed his name to Kaysen. So <laughs> now we know about you, George. All assimilation. So getting back, so they basically the Turks wanted to eliminate the Armenians because it was, you know, they wanted the land. They wanted, and they basically with my family, they were filthy rich and they, they took everything. They took the thousands of acres in agriculture, the 
the copper mine, the silver mine, their house. The, I mean, they were the only ones who got out was my grandmother and my father and my aunt because they weren't there. If they had been there in Diyarbakir, right, which is where my grandfather, great grandfather, was the member of parliament from, uh, they would have been killed. I wouldn't have been here, you know, because they would have been killed along with everybody else. So that's pretty much it, you know. There was a lot of Armenians were being treated crappy. So they started to revolt, you know, just like American blacks, you know, Black Lives Matter or, and this is a, this is a, a, a policy of Putin. If you take people and you oppress them and enough, then they're gonna, they're gonna revolt. And then you have an excuse when, to get worse, just like in 2014, the movie we saw with the Ukrainian uprising in 2014, get them riled up, infiltrate them with radicals, right? Which, which they did in, in, in that 2014. And then once they're riled up, then you have an excuse. That's what's going on in Ukraine because they've got these radicals right there that are rabble rousing and then they can put them down. So that, that, it, this is a very good movie right now uh, 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 because what's going on in Ukraine People getting killed, getting riled up, and then the soldiers kill them. And then you've got a clearance, you've got the land cleared so that Putin can have his corridor to Crimea, to the Black Sea, and uh, have his boats there in the Black Sea. And then that's why he plays ball with Erdogan, because he wants the Bosphorus so he can get his ships into the Mediterranean. So it's similar to what we did in the, in the American West, you know, getting, rid, getting rid of the Native Americans. And, and Hawaii, I mean, if you think about it, Hawaii was an independent nation, and we wanted that naval facility in the middle of the Pacific. So we took over, you know, Philippines, and we took over, you know, the whole American Southwest was part of Mexico. So I mean, it, it's a, it's just an ugly situation of what happened to my family, right? And what's happening right now in Ukraine. So, so Turkey and the Armenian genocide is not unique. It just no. happens to be one of many genocides. Yes. that we've seen in the last, what, couple of hundred years. Last 50 years. Things work. I mean, yeah, indeed, but, I mean, you know, think of, think of Southeast Asia, you know, and yeah. uh, the genocide there. Uh, think of uh, a number of African countries. Uh, yes. Rwanda comes to mind, genocide there. Darfur. Latin America, you know, the awful, what happens? Yeah. Um, and and um, you're right. I mean, you can look across the world, across history, and, and we may not be completely familiar with what happened before these things within the last couple hundred years, because there may have been, there probably were genocides, oh, yeah. possibly on a smaller scale, um, everywhere. So I put to you this idea, George. Yeah. It's part of the species. Yes. Once in a while, for reasons that are really hard, you know, to, to predict, um, one group does genocide on another. Am I right? Totally. I mean, they've done studies with chimpanzees and they're two, two different tribes, you know, of chimpanzees and they kill each other and eat the, eat the babies of the, of the opposing tribe. They actually cannibalism. So, I mean, it's part of the species, you know, um, it's part of what's in, in us. We're, we're, we're a killer race, you know, I mean, let's face it, you know. So, yeah, in, in China, what is that? The, the, um, the, um, the, uh, the Uyghurs. Yeah, right. The Uyghurs, the Uyghurs in, in uh, Xinjiang. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and then and then Myanmar with the with the Muslims in the Rohingya or whatever. You know, yeah. it's it's all over the world, you know. And you go back in when the Turks took Constantinople from the Greeks, they killed everybody. There was nobody left. They they murdered every last person that was on that mountain, you know, that in Constantinople were inside the walls. So it's not only the Turks, it's just Well what's troubling is uh a hundred years of history have gone by since the Armenian genocide, and we still have people as recently as 2016 claiming that it didn't happen. Uh, that, that's extraordinary. Um, and, you know, for that matter, we have Holocaust deniers, and I suppose oh, yes. every genocide has its deniers. Yeah. Uh, and then, you know, after you deny it and you say, well, deny it or not, we're never going to allow this to happen again, it happens again. Again and again uh, and again. And again and again. So. I guess my, my, I, I don't understand the Turkish mentality that made them do not only the Armenian genocide, but the Kurdish, Kurdish. the Kurdish uh, escapade only yeah. recently. Um, yeah. that, uh, are they angry? I mean, what is it? Uh, 
How do they justify that? Is it, is it that power needs a scapegoat? And these groups fell in the way of the scape. Think of Bosnia, you know? Uh, these groups fell in the way. Uh, they became the scapegoat because there was a, an easy political strategy to scapegoat somebody? The, the, the fact with the Armenians and the Kurds, there's a similarity there. Because the Armenians, um, they were, the, the nationalists, they wanted their own country. Because what happened is that all the Balkans pretty much broke away from the Ottoman Empire as the um, Ottoman Empire was collapsing. Bulgaria, Greece, uh, uh, Yugo, the, all the Yugoslavian areas, all the Balkans. So Armenians, the, this was a, an era, era of nationalism. And they wanted, there were the nationalists. My, my great grandfather, uh, Michael put up his, his picture now, and I'll show you. I just want to show a picture's worth a thousand words. Yeah, he was an, a member of the Ottoman parliament. Look at those um, medals on him from the Sultan, right? So he was totally involved with the economy, right? The Ottoman economy. And the, 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 the official they showed in the movie, the Turk, M Emre's father, you know, the guy who finally befriended Michael Bogosian and then got set, the firing squad that they killed him, the Turkish guy, the young Turkish guy. He only had two medals. So my great grandfather had four medals from the Sultan. So he was totally assimilated into the economy, right? In, he was an Ottoman. He might've been a Christian, but he was an Ottoman, right? But as the situation changed, right? They went after all the Armenians because they, they didn't want Armenians to even consider having a country. So they just cleaned them all out. And that's what's happening now with the Kurds, because the Kurds are trying to have their own nation, right? And, and a good part of Southeast Turkey is the, the, the Kurds who, you know, the whole thing with the Kurds, the Kurds helped killing the Armenians. And then recently, the mayor of, of Diyarbakir, of Bakhtiar, he said, the Armenians were the breakfast, we're the lunch. In other words, the Turks are trying to remove the Kurds Right. And it's the same thing that's going on now with Putin. You know, Lavrov is is like the Jerry Mahoney of Paul Winchell. You know, remember Paul Winchell and, the, and Jerry Mahoney, the dummy. Whatever Putin wants to, Lavrov to say, Lavrov is going to say, because he's the he's like Jerry Mahoney. He's the dummy. He's being manipulated by Putin. So <laughs> you've got the same situation there in Ukraine. I mean, that's what's happening. He wants cleaning out. And that's why they're murdering civilians. They, they want to clean them out. And he wants to bring Ukraine to its knees, right? So, I mean, it's all interests, you know? They, they say that there's never friends and enemies, there's just interests. And Russia's interest right now is to have that corridor and Crimea to the Black Sea. So, so let's look at the Armenian genocide and, and you know, to the extent that Cherry George wanted to teach us things about it. Yes. Uh, yes. Let's look at that and see whether we can learn anything about how to avoid getting swept into a genocide mm -hmm. like your family yeah. uh, and how, how the world can step up and try to prevent genocides, which we really haven't learned yet. We really haven't learned that either on a small scale or on a large scale. Um, so the first thing is, how would your family have done better um, if they had been able to identify this, um, you know, political, social scapegoating that was happening. I mean, if you're, if you're, uh, was it your, your grandfather, the legislator? Um, great grandfather. Great grand. Sorry, thank you. I don't want to. I'll show my grandfather too. Are, yeah, okay. He, my grandfather. We show my grandfather's picture, Michael, too. Uh, uh, that he was a sitting city councilman in 1915. He was on the uh, city council of the Arabic year. He was one of five or six people on the city council and he got killed too. They took them all out into the Desvenu Valley and sh cut them open, you know, um, with a scimitar, right? All the men. And then the women, the great grandmother, Sophie, and all the women, they led them out into the desert, you know, to clean them out there too. But, you know, my great grandfather, because he was powerful, you know, and he was wealthy, he was telling these revolutionaries, you know, don't the lion is sleeping you know he knew that the turks were, they were a minority they were only two million in, in 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 about there were about 25 million turks they were a minority he said 
don't rile them up because the lion is sleeping. Don't wake him up. He's going to come and get you, right? But because the people were oppressed, they were angry. You know, when you, when you oppress people, I mean, just like the American the Blacks in America with the Black Lives Matter, you know, if you're, if you're oppressed, you're going you're to be angry. You're going to revolt. So, so uh, I don't think my grandfather could have done anything more than he was trying. He was trying to put down people who were- no, How about run away? Well, because- I mean, That's an element in the movie. They were trying to run away. Yeah. Eventually, they, they time, they knew. But you know, when you have business, and, and my, he had his copper mines, he had his silver mines, and the They reason, didn't want to leave that behind. They were well, too heavily invested. Yeah, my uh, but I think that probably made it hard for them to see the reality, too. Yeah, uh, they they Holocaust, thought that somehow they'd be safe. Holocaust, the same thing with the Jews in, in Germany, with the Holocaust. You know, Dr. Meyerstein, he had his practice, medical practice in, in, in Leipzig or wherever. You know, he had his practice. He, they thought it was going to get better. They, they, they didn't. Ex you never expect that to happen. You know, it, it, it's just and. My grandfather was with my grandmother and my aunt and my dad on vacation on Malta. They were in the Mediterranean somewhere. And because when this thing happened, he went back. His brother went from Constantinople. He went and the other brother, they all went there to hold on to their assets, to their silver mine, copper mine. But they could have stayed away. But they they could have stayed in Malta. They could have stayed in continental Europe. Exactly. And then they would have been safe. So I guess, you know, it, it's hard. It's, it's the same thing applies to other genocides and certainly the Holocaust. If you could see it coming, and some, some Jews did, um, then you didn't, you, 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 you left your property behind, you left your life behind, and yes. you got away. And uh, I think that you, is very interesting stories come out of Germany and, you know, and, and Europe, the continental European theater there. Um, where people did get away, but a lot of them didn't because they wanted to hang around and, and hoped it would get better. And Hopefully. the lesson that I get out of this, George, is that if you see the winds of war, if you see the winds of genocide on the horizon yep. um, of, you know, some kind of hateful scapegoating, yep. you have to be conscious because you and I understand this is part of the DNA. In some countries, more than others. Exactly. But once you see that happening, you have to act on it. And that is a way you could save yourself. That's the way a lot of Jews save themselves, by getting out of Europe when the time was right, before the time got wrong. Uh, and I suppose that happened in the genocide in Turkey with the Armenians. Yes, a lot of the wealthy ones. You know, my grandmother, she lost everything, but her brothers were in constant, you know, they were wealthy. So they sent my brother, my, my father to school in Bavaria. Here was the Germans were behind this whole thing, and they send this kid to little kid to to Munich to München, no Memmingen to a private Catholic boarding school in in Bavaria, right? And they and they did that. So you know, Dr. Meyerstein went to Long Island and opened a new practice. I mean, if there's life, there's hope, you know. And a lot of people, you know, left. A lot of the wealthy right, army. You got, you got to be away from harm. Uh, yeah, in the in the movie, the Germans are portrayed as as uh, encouraging the Turks to oh, do yeah. this. Oh yeah, they were behind. They were the brains behind the whole thing. I mean, it, it as I've said before, this was in some ways a dress rehearsal for the Holocaust. You know, um, bring up that that the, the Michael the 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 not the New York Times article, the other one, just the um, the, the the link. Yeah, um, yeah, that that one is a good. Uh, this guy Zifar Chang. Chang wrote some article, you know, about how the Armenian genocide was tied to the Holocaust. And, 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 and then also, um, you know, there, and there's one other thing there, that other link, that Michael had put the other link up and, and it'll, yeah, yeah, that New York, uh, the New York Times article, yeah, there was a New York Times article as well. That, that was about the Kurds, and it, there's a picture there of, of the area of my grandparents where they lived, showing after 2015 what the Turks did when they leveled everything except for my grandparents' house and the two churches there because they were historic monuments. So bo bottom line is cleaning out, you know, get out, like you said, get out while you have a chance because if there's life, there's hope. But if That's you don't- pays to read the newspaper. It's based to see the storm clouds on the horizon. By the way, those, uh, those references, um, people can, 
uh, when they watch this, you know, on YouTube, they can, A, they can uh, freeze frame the thing and write it down, or B, we will put those links in the description on YouTube. So all they have to do is copy and paste the links out and they can see these articles. And one other thing, you know, to, to, I mean, Erdogan, right? He's now making friends with all the people he had alienated, right? And because he's got, there's an election coming up in 2023, and he's got to, you know, he's got to be reelected. So e economically, he's making friends and stuff. But people in, you know, you have to be aware of, of once he gets reelected, is he going to continue this or is just just temporary until he gets reelected? So, you know, um, and Putin, you know, this is all about his maintaining power as well. It's all about powers. That's what scapegoats are for. Power. It's all about scapegoats power. Scapegoats to allow the autocrat to uh, improve, increase his power. Um, right. and, and there's no question that Erdogan is into power. He's been developing his power for a long time, and he's had, he's had coups against him, or at least, uh, you know, groups that he felt were trying to insurrect. Um, right. And he's he's uh, he's taken them out of office in one way or another. And he's pretty tough. He's an autocrat. Yes. But I want to go to a second point before we run out of time, and that is this: the French in this movie yeah. turned out to be the heroes. Yes, I mean to some extent, to a limited extent. Yeah. Uh, one of my favorite actors. Uh, he was uh, I forget his name, but he was he was in the movie called The Professionals years ago, and he was a really wonderful criminal in that in that movie <laughs> if you have his name let's let's hear the name but um he's he's on he's on the uh the jean list of, uh yeah i just saw jean renault at the bottom yeah, that, that's him that's him um and and he played the captain of the french warship mm -hmm. uh, that picked up the escaping armenians oh yeah there weren't, there weren't that many that escaped as a matter of fact but he took a lot of them on his ship uh, at some risk, because you know he he could have had a war out there against yeah. his ship by by the Turks, uh, but he saved them, and he was determined to save them. And he was a humanitarian, and he was, you know, I guess he was reflecting the the French uh, policy at the time. But he he saved them, and you say, you know, what's the lesson there? There's a lesson there that you you hope for, you look for um, active moral leaders mm -hmm. who are willing to step in and save the people who might be victims of a genocide. And exactly. that's what this ship captain was. He, he saved them. And, and I'm not sure that he was uh, you know, operating on specific orders, but he, he yeah. did what he thought he had to do and he saved them. And they were saved just, just like the Jews that were not saved on that Sturma in the Black Sea that sank, you know, because you nobody know, would take them. Nobody would take them. And that, that's, that's the sadness of, 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 of when you have genocides like this. And it's just. So you look for heroes. Yeah. You look for heroes who will intervene. You look for heroes who will say, no, you can't do that. You look for heroes to save people who are running from a genocide. And they are the true heroes. They are the moral um, thought leaders who, who save us and, and, and somehow, you know, act against the continuation of the genocide. In this case, the genocide had already gone a long way. A lot of people have been killed, millions. Altogether, one and a half million, as I remember, the Armenians. About that, yeah. Um, and, this, and this is sort of at the tail end of it. But it, just, it teaches you something. And Terry George is trying to teach us that, yes, there are heroes yes. larger than life who will step in and actually help. Uh, and that's what we need. We need to insinuate that kind of thinking. Um, proliferated around Europe, around the world, where people are unafraid to step in, even at the risk of their own lives and nice. property, to step in and say, "No, you can't do that. I'm going to, I'm going to oppose you if you do genocide and and try to kill people." The, the UN head has gone and done some negotiation there with Putin, and so, <clears throat> ostensibly they're letting some of those people out of um, that. Um, gas plant in, in, in Mar Maripol or wherever, and letting them go so that they don't get killed, you know, the civilians, right? So he was able to negotiate that, you know, at least on the surface, right, to get these people out. And that was- That's very iffy right now, George. 
Yeah, oh, really? Uh, uh, yeah, that humanitarian efforts seem to have stopped. And one of the elements that I found very interesting yeah. uh, was that the Ukrainians who were about to, you know, leave on the humanitarian passageway, passage, yeah. uh, were, were, were concerned uh, that the Russians were going to turn those buses around and head east into Russia. Oh, and yeah. hold them in camps in Russia, and they really didn't want that, even in, at greater risk to themselves. Yeah. So no they, trust. they didn't trust the Russians, is what it was, and yeah. nobody, nobody trusts the Russians right now. And nobody. Can you blame, them. Can you blame them? No. And, and if your life is at stake, you know you are going to make um, a decision based on who you trust. You know. Yeah. Well, yeah, George, this is very interesting. It's historical. I'm glad. I'm glad we found, um, you know, some a movie that that um, uh, that helps you in terms of seeing back a hundred years ago and and evaluating and confirming to some extent, um, you know, what happened in the Armenian genocide. But I'm I'm also I think it's important that we study history. You know, history can help us and take lessons from history, uh, else we are deemed to repeat history. We have repeated genocide okay. so many times that we really ought to get out of that habit. And maybe now when we see it unfolding in front of us in terms of Putin's genocide in uh, Ukraine, maybe the lesson is refreshed and maybe we will find ways to stop it. And maybe the U.S. is, is, is the leader, the moral leader that can stand up against it. Um, all of this somehow connects, doesn't it, George? Yes, I would suggest uh, three ninety nine on on Amazon dot com or some uh, to, to for the public to watch that movie because it was really suppressed by by Turkish men, you know, young Turkish men, and take a look because this, I mean, it gets a little into that romance, but a lot of the public in their reviews, you know, they liked it, you know, for whatever the lacking it was they liked it and they thought it was a good movie you know so um you know it, even the public like 4.5 out of 5 they rated it you know how do you rate it george i would rate it a nine and a half you know especially because i'm, I'm sensitized to this whole issue you know um um you know the, the 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 reason i didn't give it a 10 is because i think that's that romance the triple romance between the two that sort of took away a little bit from the, from the, you know, they try to make it more interesting, you know, but it's, a few people have written, docu done documentaries since then, what, what was his name, who did um, Intent to Destroy, which is a movie, I forgot his name, but the, the guy who, that, that was a really good actual, you know, documentary. Well, I think the more documentary is, the more in I'm in interested. But I, I, I would give it a nine, because I feel that although the love story was not convincing, Mm -hmm. um uh, it it taught me what happened it taught me in in those days in that part of the world uh, the, yeah. the reach of world war one was uh, was worldwide really in many ways perhaps yeah. not as worldwide as world war ii but still uh it, it covered a lot of ground and and this teaches you that it puts you there and it makes you understand that even people who don't think they're at risk that one day they find they're at risk this happened in both world wars and resulted in was part of genocide in both world wars. We have got to stop doing that. We've also got to stop doing the show, uh, George, because we're out of time. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, say, say, most definitely. Say goodbye to the people, George. Take care. Aloha. Thank you, Jay. Thanks for your insights today. Have a good day. Aloha. Thank you, George. Aloha. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. 
You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.